and I'm coming at you with a video and basically what I'm gonna be doing I'm gonna start at WWE Elimination Chamber and I'm gonna book all the way up to matches that I want at WrestleMania now I'm only doing the chamber matches at Elimination Chamber and I'm only doing like certain matches so like rivalries that come out of this chamber match you know and also like basically just rivalries that I'd want to see uh, I'm not doing a women's chamber match however um, I mean you know I'm not doing a women's chamber match for now but basically I'm gonna be doing three elimination chamber matches and the first one is gonna be for the WWE championship the second one is gonna be for the NXT championship I'm actually giving the NXT stars time to shine and honestly the six guys that I put into this chamber match it could have the potential if booked by Triple H to be the greatest elimination chamber match of all time. And of course, we've got the Universal Championship. I'm not doing some the winner faces Roman Reigns at the end of the night type bullcrap. No, Roman is putting this title on the line inside the chamber. So, we're going to start here with the WWE Championship match. So, of course, the show opens up. The music hits. Out comes your WWE Champion, Drew McIntyre. And McIntyre, he's ready. He is ready. Out next comes Sheamus, his current rival. So Sheamus, of course, you know, he's beating on the chamber. I'm going to get to you, Drew Mac. Well, I I'm not doing an Irish accent at all because I'm not. But, yeah, he's basically, I'm going to get to you, Drew McIntyre. Out next comes... Who's that champ I see? Rhetorical question, but they all know the answer. Keith Lee. And Keith Lee comes out. Of course, you know, he's like, he's looking intense. He's ready to get his hands on somebody. And finally, fourth is Randy Orton. Randy Orton comes out. Now, of course, Randy Orton does have the feud with the Fiend going. Orton's basically feuding with every single baby face on Raw right now. So and and heels too. I mean, I'd say he's he's probably about to start feuding with Sheamus kind of after that bro kick. Uh, so, all right. So out next comes AJ Styles, and last but not least, it's your boy Kofi King. So basically, five of the six competitors are the same. I'm not including Jeff Hardy. I'm replacing him with Keith Lee. Keith Lee, of course, will not be fighting for the U.S. Championship. Jeff Hardy will fight Riddle and Bobby Lashley for the U.S. title. Of course, I'm going to have Riddle win it. Jeff Hardy can take the pin. It's not like they're really doing anything with him right now anyway. But oh, Hardy is kind of at the age where it's like, yeah, I can put over young stars. Of course, you know, Bobby Lashley doesn't have to eat the pin. So, you know, it works out. But... Of course, Kofi and AJ start off the match, and of course, they're putting on really good wrestling. Did I say wrestling? Wrestling. All right, of course, it's good. Both men are down. The timer starts. It ends, and Randy Orton comes out. And we get a few minutes, uh, like three or four minutes, of basically Randy Orton completely destroying both AJ Styles and Kofi. But... All of a sudden, the lights go down. And right there, all right, the lights come back up. And there's just, all right, there's no crowd, obviously, so you can pull this off. There's just the fiend standing at the top of the entranceway, covered in flames. Of course, this could be like, you know, a hologram or something. But it, like, the fiend is covered in flames. He's burning and he's just staring holes through Orton. Orton's staring back. Kofi Kingston comes up from behind with the roll up. One, two, three. Kofi eliminates Orton. The lights go back down. The fiend is gone. Orton's pissed. Like, Orton basically was kind of in a trance looking at the fiend. Orton snaps out of it. RKO's Kofi Kingston. Leaves to, uh, then like, he's leaving, and as he's leaving, he's running. I'm going to find the Fiend, and I'm going to kick his ass. You know, stuff like that. AJ Styles takes advantage. One, two, three. Kofi Kingston is eliminated after that RKO. 
The timer starts up. At number four, out comes Sheamus. And, of course, Sheamus and AJ Styles, you know, they're both heels. But, you know, it's like, hey, you know, we don't like each other. We both have the same goal in mind. So, um, so then, of course, they wrestle. Out comes number five, the WWE champion, Drew McIntyre. And, you know, of course, McIntyre, Sheamus, obviously, they're you know, beefing. So, Sheamus ends up putting Drew McIntyre through the lexicon glass. And then Styles and Sheamus both go down. The timer starts up, and out comes number six, Keith Lee. Keith Lee gets in the ring, immediately gets AJ Styles up, hits a big bang catastrophe. One, two, three. AJ Styles is eliminated. Keith Lee, of course, starts wrecking Sheamus. You know, they don't like each other. Um, and then, you know, Sheamus ends up taking Keith Lee down with the brogue, but Keith Lee rolls to the outside. McIntyre comes in. Of course, McIntyre and Sheamus are fighting. Uh, Sheamus ends up broguing McIntyre. McIntyre also rolls out of the ring. Keith Lee comes up comes back in they fight for a little while Sheamus hits another brogue on Keith Lee but Keith Lee rolls out of the ring and Sheamus at this point is getting frustrated you know he starts like um, uh, so Sheamus starts taking the um, cover off the turnbuckle he's gonna get either Keith, he's gonna get somebody and he's just gonna smash their head in he turns around into a bro kick one two three uh, McIntyre eliminates Sheamus, and the important part is we've kept Keith Lee and Drew McIntyre apart. You know, uh, people have been wanting to see these two lock up. They have not locked up yet. So then, of course, Sheamus is pissed off. Sheamus bro kicks McIntyre. Sheamus bro kicks Keith Lee. You know, Sheamus is upset. Um, and then, you know, of course, he leaves the chamber. McIntyre and Keith Lee slowly get to their feet, and then we have an absolute hosh fest. Like, I'm talking 10 to 15 minutes of just McIntyre and Lee going back and forth. Keith Lee gets McIntyre up for the Big Bang Catastrophe. McIntyre ends up landing on his feet. McIntyre hits one Claymore, two Claymore, three Claymore, and then he ends up running the ropes, you know, twice and hits one big super Claymore. Maybe have Keith Lee do like a flip because like that's how much power McIntyre put into that Claymore. One, two, three. McIntyre retains the championship. Um, yeah, I mean, McIntyre retains. What else can I say? So, obviously, this was a really good match and. The Keith Lee and McIntyre stuff at the end was awesome. All right, so of course this opens up the show. Well, actually, you know what? This was the second match on the show. The first was the United States Championship match, which Riddle won. After the match, Bobby Lashley comes up behind and completely destroys Drew McIntyre um, and Keith Lee. You know, Bobby Lashley just absolutely destroys them. And, you know, basically we're teasing Lashley versus McIntyre versus Lee at WrestleMania for the WWE Championship. You know, and I really, like, I really want to see that. So, yes, uh, Lashley does come up from behind at the end and destroys them. Of course, MVP's hyping him up, you know. Bro, this is how I would book. Elimination Chamber. Now, with when it comes to NXT, I'm not sure if Tommaso Ciampa and Karrion Cross are hurt because it doesn't seem like they've really been on lately. Of course, I haven't really been fo able to follow NXT since I started, or really any of the shows. I basically just go back and pick like the moments that I want to see, which lately has mostly been Cesaro matches since Cesaro is finally getting a push. Of course, Cesaro's push is going to come into play. So, yeah. All right, so the NXT Championship Elimination Chamber. Out first comes Karrion Cross, and this guy looks absolutely intense. He's got Scarlet with him. You know, it, like, and 
he just looks intense. The music hits. Out comes next is your NXT champion, Finn Balor. I'm not really a big fan of Finn Balor, to be honest. Um, but, you know, I mean, I'm just not. The music hits. Out comes Pete Dunne. Pete Dunne, of course, ready to break some fingers. You know, of course, Pete Dunne is intense. And finally, the music hits, and out comes Adam Cole as the fourth guy. He recently just turned heel. By the way, we're pretending that Takeover did t the Takeover main event was the women's championship match, and you know, say we also had like, uh, like uh, I don't know, but the NXT championship was not defended at the Takeover in the main event, so because they were gonna have this match. All right, so the music hits. Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa come out respectively, and we start the match off right with Ciampa versus Gargano. Of course, these two are going to put on an absolute show. The timer goes down. Out comes Adam Cole. Once again, I mean, these, these three are just going to put on an absolute show. All right, I mean, they're going to put on a show. The timer hits. Out comes number four, the NXT champion Finn Balor. You know, we're basically taking it back to how this all, how Finn Balor's reign all started. With after Karrion Cross's injury, the Fatal Four Way 60 Minute Iron Man match, which was awesome, by the way. That was a great match. I've already watched it like two or three times. The booking was pretty good. All right, of course, Finn Balor and Adam Cole. You know, they're going at it. The mute, the uh, the timer goes down and hits Karrion Cross comes out completely destroys everybody he hits a uh, he gets Johnny Gargano into a straight jacket Gargano taps Gargano's already gone now Finn Balor goes up top and hits the coup de gras on Adam Cole but then Cross tosses him out of the ring, hits a Doomsday Saito, and eliminates Adam Cole. So Cross already has two eliminations, and he didn't want Finn Balor to get that elimination. Of course, the timer goes down. Out comes Pete Dunne. Now, by the way, Pete Dunne won the right to enter last because hit during a gauntlet match on NXT. Him and it came down to him and Champa, and. And uh, Pete Dunne hit a low blow on Champa, and ended up taking him out. Pete Dunne does the same thing in this match. He comes in, him and Champa go at it for a few minutes, and Pete Dunne hits a low blow and then eliminates um, eliminates Champa. This is the setup to Maso Champa versus Pete Dunne at the NXT Takeover before WrestleMania. So yeah, that's basically what I'm doing here because I want to see these two go at it. You know, like th this has a big match feel. So, so, hey, somebody other than Karrion Cross got an eliminate. Well, Karrion Cross comes from behind and and uh, <clears throat> well, <laughs> puts Pete Dunne in the straight jacket. Pete Dunne does not tap. He submit or he doesn't submit. He passes out. You know, Cross has him in it for about, you know, a good, a solid minute and a half before Pete Dunne passes out. Of course, Finn Balor comes in, and Finn Balor's trying to fight off Cross, but Cross just wrecks Finn Balor. He actually goes up to the top. Balor goes up to the top looking for a coup de gras, but, but Karrion Cross just gets up, and with cat like agility, gets up there, you know. Hits a couple of nice looking right hooks to Finn Balor. If this is possible, he hits a Doomsday Saito from the top of the chamber. I don't know if this is possible. If there's anybody that I would trust to be able to like do that without hurting themselves, it would be either Finn Balor or Gargano. He hits a Doomsday Saito. Now keep it, this is a fantasy booking, so let's just go along with it, okay? He hits a Doomsday Saito to Balor off the top. Just top, throws his arm over him. One, two, three. Karrion Cross has completely wrecked the chamber, eliminating four of NXT's top stars. You know, Pete Dunne, uh, you know, Pete Dunne, Adam Cole, Johnny Gargano, and Finn Balor, the NXT champion. He's completely wrecked everybody. 
and he's the NXT champion. Like, put it back on Karrion Cross. Karrion Cross is the best wrestler in it. Karrion Cross and Tommaso Ciampa are my two favorite wrestlers in NXT right now. All right, now keep in mind what we accomplished in this match. Well, I'll go over what we accomplished in each match at the end of this. All right, so the main event, the Universal Champion, hits the music, out comes your Universal Champion, Roman Reigns, two boos. Next up, Shinsuke Nakamura is coming out. Or no, Cesaro's coming out next. Of course, Cesaro comes out to a major pop. Um, Kevin Owens, obviously there's no crowd, but you know, the crowd noise is going to be, you know, just, it's going to seem to be a little bit pumped up for Cesaro. All right, out next comes Kevin Owens and finally Daniel Bryan. So three of the four guys are actually in the chamber. Now, these, the first two that are starting off are not in the chamber. The first one is Shinsuke Nakamura. He has, he's starting the match. And number six is a bit of a surprise, but he does have a role in the match. And that's Otis. You know, Chad Gable got him fired up for the chamber. They start off Nakamura and Otis, you know, they just, they go back and forth, you know. Uh, it's not a complete wrecking. Like, obviously, they're going to go back and forth. We're going to make Nakamura look really good in this match. I mean, you know, basically, Nakamura's agility and kicks are just wearing down Otis, you know. Then hits the timer. Out comes number three, Daniel Bryan. You know, Bryan is, or no, Cesaro. Cesaro comes out number three. Cesaro, we're going to allow him to show off a lot of his strength and stuff. You know, that's basically Otis's role in here is to allow Cesaro and Roman Reigns to show off, you know, their power moves, their strength, you know. Out comes number four. It's Kevin Owen. Or no, it's Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan comes out, you know, but everybody goes back and forth. Everybody has some intervals within the five minutes before number five comes out that they, you know, that they're able to show off and dominate a little bit. Out comes number five, Roman Reigns. So Kevin Owens basically defeat, he upset Roman Reigns thanks to a distraction from like Daniel Bryan or somebody to earn the right to enter number six. All right, Roman comes in, completely dominates. So, Cesaro does that little thing that he does where like he's able to pull Otis, he goes up to like the second rope and is able to pull Otis over for a superplex. And then like he hits a couple of uppercuts, hits a neutralizer on Otis and is going to pin and then Roman Reigns just comes in, Superman punches Cesaro right after. He waits for Otis to get up, hits a spear, one, two, three. Roman Reigns ends up eliminating Otis, but Cesaro did get the chance to show off, you know, that strength and stuff. You know, I mean, he hit, you know, the big superplex. He did a swing earlier on Otis. He hit a neutralizer. Uh, he was able to get Otis up for a jerk for one of those European uppercuts. Basically, our goal in this match is to make Cesaro look really freaking good. All right. So, uh, Otis is eliminated. The timer hits. Out comes Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens, of course, trying to hit Stunner. He comes in, hits Stunners on everybody. Not a, But he's not able to get a pin. You know, everybody kind of rolls out of the ring. So let's fast forward a bit. We get Cesaro and Brian going back and forth. You know, of course they have, this is their first time actually meeting in the match, kind of. You know, they kind of give that little nod to each other. But it's like friendly, but it's like, hey, we both want this Universal Championship really bad. In the end, Cesaro ends up hitting a neutralizer and pinning Daniel Bryan. So Brian is the second guy eliminated. That does not mean, I'm not burying Daniel Bryan. Like, Daniel Bryan still got to look good. Everybody's going to look good in this match. Just because they didn't get an elimination does not mean they didn't look good. Of course, you know, Kevin Owens is going to look like a badass, stunning everybody, you know. Uh, like I said, he wasn't able to get any pins. Like, maybe everybody kind of rolled over outside or something. So, fast forward a little bit more. Shinsuke Nakamura and Kevin Owens going back and forth. 
Owens goes for the little rolling cannonball, but Nakamura ends up moving out of the way, and Owens just hits the turnbuckle, and then Owens tries to sit up. Kinshasa, one, two, three. Shinsuke Nakamura has eliminated Kevin Owens. So Nakamura, Cesaro, and Roman are the last three remaining. Cesaro and Nakamura, obviously, they give the nod. Like, Cesaro basically respects everybody in this match. You know, and it really, we're just getting good wrestling. Roman is going to watch from the outside because he's like, well, whoever eliminates the other guy, you know, I'm going to take advantage. You know, so Roman's just watching outside as these two go back and forth. Nakamura goes for a Kinshasa. Cesaro ducks. Cesaro gets him in the big swing. Goes into the sharpshooter. Nakamura gets to the ropes. So then Cesaro almost makes a mistake, ends up eating a Kinshasa, and then and then Nakamura goes for the pin, but Cesaro's just able to grab that bottom rope and stay alive. Cesaro ends up hitting, uh, ends up coming back, ends up hitting the neutralizer. He goes for the pin. Shinsuke grabs the bottom rope. So basically we're gonna give these two like, you know, their own mini match within the match. They're going to get about, you know, eight, ten minutes to go back and forth. Finally, Cesaro is able to get the upper hand, hit the neutralizer in the middle of the ring. One, two, three, you know, Nakamura is eliminated. But Nakamura had a really good showing. Everybody had a really good showing in this match, you know. Other than o Otis was pretty much there to make everybody look good, so... We co it comes down to Roman and Cesaro. These two go back and forth for a little while, but finally Cesaro's absolutely exhausted. I mean, you look at all the pow all the big moves he did to Otis, the mini matches with Brian and Nakamura within the chamber. Cesaro is absolutely exhausted, and Cesaro finally says, "Hit me with your best shot." Roman hits the Superman punch, runs the ropes, hits the spear. One, two, three. Roman Reigns retains the Universal Championship. No, actually, Roman, it looks like he's going for the pin after the spear. He does not. He instead gets Cesaro in a guillotine. And Cesaro, it takes a solid three minutes for Cesaro to finally pass out like Cesaro's almost he continues to fight it's like he refuses to tap and he ends up passing out and that is basically how you know after the match Edge comes out he finally says hey Roman I'm going after you although I would much rather see McIntyre versus Edge I don't want to see Edge take the WWE Championship off of McIntyre I'm obviously going to give that that um, honor to either Lashley or Keith Lee, or I could have McIntyre retain. You'll just have to continue watching to find out. The Edge is like, you're next. All right. So we're going to fast forward to Fast Lane. Fast Lane, there's two matches, two important matches. You've got your WWE Championship match. McIntyre is going to defend against Sheamus. And you're going to have Roman Reigns versus Cesaro for the Universal Championship. Alright. So McIntyre and Sheamus first. You know, we're going to have a solid... Oh, wait. I forgot to explain how... Alright. So basically, Kofi Kingston get, gets to eliminate Randy Orton. Styles gets to eliminate Kofi Kingston. So... You know, you're giving those, you know, Kofi Kingston kind of gets that upset victory, and then AJ Styles gets his heel moment where he's like, yeah, I'm going to take advantage and eliminate Kofi. So, uh, obviously, you gave Keith Lee the elimination of AJ Styles. So, you know, Keith Lee gets an elimination. McIntyre gets two. He eliminates Sheamus first, and then, of course, Sheamus afterwards, he bro kicks through that, and obviously, Sheamus wants his one on one match. So, that's going to happen. And obviously, McIntyre and Keith Lee to set up the shades of WrestleMania. And of course, we look at Bobby Lashley being involved because I believe that triple threat would be awesome. You know, I believe that triple threat would be the NXT Championship. Karrion Cross gets to look like an absolute monster and take his championship back. You've obviously set up Finn Balor versus Karrion Cross. And also, after the low blow elimination from Pete Dunne, you've set up Pete Dunne versus Tommaso Ciampa. 
So you've got two really good matches right there for the TakeOver before Mania and two really big high profile matches. So the Universal Championship, it was basically Otis was there to make everybody look really good, you know, make all the big strong men look strong. Um, you know, Owens and Bryan were there. Owens has already had so many shots at the Universal title already that, like, you know, I just didn't see a point. Like, he's already kind of an established main event guy on SmackDown, so. And so is Daniel Bryan, so they, they can take the pins and they, it still won't affect them too bad, I mean. You know, and that allows Cesaro and Nakamura both to get really big pins, obviously, for their career. Nakamura and Cesaro, that's a match you maybe want to see down the line, you know. Obviously, it's going to be face versus face, but, I mean, you gave these two time to fight. You allowed Roman to still play as a heel because, you know, he's like, well, I'm going to let these two wear each other out. And then you also made Cesaro look like an absolute monster. Like, and Cesaro, if he's going to get the push, and then in my universe, he is getting a push. Cesaro is the guy, man. Cesaro, you know, he showed the fight. And you'll see what the plans at Mania for him, because obviously Roman versus Edge, you know, so you'll see the plans at Mania for Cesaro. So fast lane comes around. <clears throat> um, we're actually going to start off with the U.S. title. We're going to get Riddle defending against Randy Orton, and Randy Orton looks like he's going to win the U.S. title. Oh, here comes the Fiend with another distraction. Riddle's able to roll him up and pin him and retain. Riddle gets the hell out of there. Or no, actually, this time it's the Fiend for real. And you're going to have kind of like ash and burn marks all over the Fiend. It's going to look like he's like, well, he just got out of a fire after all. He's going to completely wreck Randy Orton. And then Riddle's going to come up to him and like kind of a comedy try to high five him. Like, thanks, bro, for the assist. The Fiend just wrecks Riddle for the hell of it. Because, I mean, it's the Fiend. You know, make the Fiend look bad. Make him look bad. All right, so the WWE Championship, McIntyre and Sheamus, give them a solid, you know, 15, 20 minutes of, like, you know, they're both very talented wrestlers, obviously. McIntyre hits one, two, or Sheamus hits a bro midway through the match. McIntyre kicks out at one. The goal is to make McIntyre look really strong. <clears throat> In the end, McIntyre hits one Claymore. And he's like, you know what? I think this, I think this fool, I think this coward deserves another Claymore. He hits a second one. McIntyre's like, nah, 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 nah. One more. He hits a third Claymore. One, two, three. And Sheamus is down. McIntyre is still your WWE champion. Lashley comes out and destroys McIntyre afterwards again. All right, Keith Lee comes out to make the save, and Keith Lee actually is able to run through Lashley some. McIntyre comes from behind with the Claymore. Or no, no, we're not gonna do that because that's kind of a heel move. And McIntyre, you know, McIntyre just kind of nods at Keith Lee. You know, Keith Lee nods at him, and then they both double team Lashley and put him through the announce table. I mean, you know, why not? Our main event, the Universal Championship between Roman Reigns and Cesaro, and have these two going back and forth. Like Cesaro's actually, like actually have Cesaro kind of dominate Roman a little bit. Like Cesaro looks absolutely dominant. Cesaro ends up though making a mistake because he gets out of the ring kind of taunting Heyman, and then he ends up pushing Heyman down because Heyman has been. You know, Heyman maybe has been getting, just trying to get involved a little too much, like distract, or like Heyman shouting out what Roman should do. Cesaro's getting annoyed, so he pushes it down, tells him to shut up, gets back in the ring, you know, and then the music hits and out comes Brock Lesnar. Obviously, Brock Lesnar does not like Cesaro was, you know, messing with Heyman. 
Lesnar comes in, German suplexes, F5s. Obviously, Cesaro wins the match by DQ. And then Brock goes over. He helps Roman up. They kind of nod at each other, hug and all that. And Heyman joins them. And boom, you know, we're not going to do the Brock versus Roman thing yet, obviously. Um, you know, pretty much it's like, hey, we're both Heyman guys. Um, and we both don't like it when Heyman gets messed with. So, so that finally leads us into the takeover before WrestleMania. Johnny, or we got Tommaso Ciampa versus Pete Dunne. Now, the match, we're going to give them a solid 20, 25 minutes, you know, obviously. And Pete Dunne, act, the referee's down. Pete Dunne goes for a low blow, but it does absolutely nothing. And Pete Dunne just, like, goes back to the corner shocked. And then Tommaso Ciampa, laughing, pulls a cup out. And uh, then, he, then he absolutely wrecks Pete Dunne. Goes to the second rope, hits that little Samoan drop type thing. He do, I don't know what it's called, but he hits it. A new ref comes down. One, two, three. Tommaso Ciampa finally overcomes Pete Dunne after Pete Dunne screwed him over twice now. You know, Ciampa gets his revenge. We head to the main event, and this is similar to Cena versus Lesnar at SummerSlam 2016. Karrion Cross absolutely runs through Finn Balor and say like, I mean, I'm not, Balor's going to get some offense in, but it's basically going to be a 10, 12 minute squash match. You know, Karrion Cross just it looks unstoppable. He absolutely looks unstoppable, you know. So that's basically it. Now we're going to get to WrestleMania, and we're going to start off with The Fiend versus Randy Orton in a Falls Count Anywhere match. And, you know, or we're going to do a Firefly Funhouse Falls Count Anywhere match, and they're actually going to battle, like, it, they're not going to battle, it's basically going to be like the Firefly Funhouse match from Cena, where Orton where The Fiend is actually beating Orton through psychological mind games. And we're going to end with Randy Orton sitting there in the, uh, yeah, he's in the middle he, of, like, the room that Bray Wyatt's usually in. And then, like, it's, like, all around him, he's just going to hear Bray's laugh. Then the puppets all pop out, and Orton just starts, like, picking up the puppets and throwing them around. But then the fiend comes from behind, hits a Uranagi, Sister Abigail, one, and then Bray is there to count the pin again. One, two, three, and the fiend pins Randy Orton in the middle of the of the uh, actual funhouse. The fiend ends up opening the door and leaves the room, and then Bray just pulls out a can of gasoline and douses Orton in it. He douses the whole room in it, gets a, pulls a lighter out of his pocket and just throws, and then throws it and leaves the room. And you see the whole fun house go up in flames. Kind of reminiscent of when Orton actually burned down like Bray Wyatt's compound. Bray Wyatt burns down the fun house but with Orton inside of it. And the Falls Count Anywhere was obviously so we could end in the funhouse. You know, the Fiend pins Randy Orton in the middle of the funhouse, and then Bray Wyatt burns it down with Orton inside. And honestly, like, if this video can get to, say, 20 likes, then I'll do, like, uh, how I would book you know the theme after the funhouse is burnt down you know I'll have to come up with something creative I'll also do you know how would I book Cesaro you know after his push right here like how would I continue to push Cesaro uh, how I would book Shinsuke Nakamura you know how I would book the winner of the WWE Championships title run, how, how I would book the rest of Roman Reigns title run, just let me know in the comments below and 
I'm gonna say, you know, I'm gonna say 10 likes. Get this video to 10 likes. And then just leave it in the comment section what you want to see, and I'll try to do them. Because honestly, I'm having a really good time with this. Alright. So the second match on the WrestleMania card, or the, the next match I'm going to be doing, Cesaro versus Brock Lesnar. And the key here, Cesaro is not going to beat Brock Lesnar. I mean, this is Brock Lesnar's first match back. But it's not going to be a squash either. You know, Cesaro, there's going to be times when Cesaro does look dominant over Lesnar. I mean, you know, that much. And then, like, there's going to be times when Lesnar wrecking Cesaro. But, you know, it's not going to be a short match. It's going to be probably a 20-minute match. You know, The Fiend and Orton wasn't really a long match. It was more like... You know, Firefly Funhouse match length. This match goes for a solid 20 minutes, and in the end, Lesnar hits one F5. Cesaro kicks out. Lesnar hits two F5. Cesaro kicks out. Lesnar goes for a third. Cesaro slips out, hits a neutralizer on Lesnar. Lesnar kicks out. Cesaro hits the swing on Lesnar. He goes for the sharpshooter, but Lesnar just gets up and manages to hit another German and then hits one last F5, one, two, three. Lesnar beats Cesaro, but Cesaro honestly came out of this looking like a million, a million bucks. All right. Now, we're going to say the U.S. title and the IC title are both going to be defended in multiple man ladder matches. I'm going to have Shinsuke Nakamura win the Intercontinental Championship. You know, I know Big E literally not too long ago just won it, but, you know, I mean. And then the U.S. title, Riddle, I'm going to have Riddle retain it because, I mean, I think Riddle is still a solid champion. I mean, you know, Riddle retains it. But that's two multiple man ladder matches that we're getting. You know, obviously, like, the U.S. title is probably going to feature, like, you know, Riddle, Jeff Hardy, AJ Styles, you know, guys like that. The IC title is probably going to feature Big E, Daniel Bryan, Nakamura, Rey Mysterio, Corbin, Sami Zayn, you know. So, you know, just, <clears throat> I get, I'm not really going to talk, <coughs> not really going to talk about those, so, <coughs> just take them how you see them, you know. All right, so. We're going to get to, you know, <coughs> sorry guys, I'm choking on my coffee. We're going to get to the WWE Championship Triple Threat, Keith Lee versus Bobby Lashley versus Drew McIntyre. Absolute hoss fest. I'm talking like all three of these guys are showing off what they can do, you know, and in the end, Lashley ends up putting locking in the hurt lock on McIntyre and you know Keith Lee comes from behind and then ends up hitting like a German suplex on both guys. We're gonna make Keith Lee look absolutely powerful. In the end though, it's a triple threat. The entire hurt business comes down and they actually end up, you know, putting somehow putting Keith Lee through the announce table, basically taking him out of the match. And in the end, McIntyre does hit the Claymore on Lashley, but Lashley kicks out at one. McIntyre's like, oh, man, what do I have to do? He goes for a second when he misses. Lashley hits one spear, and then he hits another spear. And then he waits for McIntyre to get up, locks in the hurt lock. McIntyre ends up tapping out. McIntyre does tap out. This is crucial because it makes Lashley look absolutely strong. Bobby Lashley is your new WWE Champion. And obviously he's got MVP behind him hyping him up. So Lashley's got a manager and he's the WWE Champion. And he's been booked to look absolutely strong. So, you know, so Lashley is your new WWE Champion. And in the main event, we got Roman Reigns versus Edge for the Universal title. Uh, you know, and you know, we're just gonna get. I mean, it's a good match, you know, Roman and Edge. Even though I'd prefer to see Edge versus McIntyre. Uh, honestly, I I like Edge, but I didn't really want him to win the Royal Rumble. 
Roman ends up defeating Edge. Um, I don't know. We're probably going to say there were some shenanigans. You know, obviously the Usos. You know, Jimmy Uso makes his return and helps Roman win in the main event. There's not really. There's going to be a crowd this year, so. But I mean, I mean Roman ends up winning. He hits you know spear versus spear. They both end up hitting you know, a couple of spears in each other. But Roman's final spear. And then, you know, Roman ends up pinning Edge. One, two, three. Roman Reigns is still your Universal Champion. I'm not a fan of this match, but it still has the potential to be really good. But it's too early to take the Universal title off of Roman Reigns. So, Roman ends up winning. WrestleMania goes off. And basically, that's how I would book from Elimination Chamber all the way up until WrestleMania. Um... Honestly, I had a really good time making this, and I think like the creative, you know, was actually pretty solid. So, but let me know what you guys thought, and also leave suggestions for other videos. You know, uh, I do want to make a, um, I am gonna make a, you know, how I would push Cesaro, you know, which will start earlier than this, and. I also want to make a video about how you can make Braun Strowman a monster again, you know. Like, just go back to the old days of, like, Braun destroying everything in the wrecking shop. Eventually build him up to potentially be, you know, champion, world champion material again as a big monster heel rather than, you know. It's a video I want to make, but I don't know how interested people would be in it, but... I do want to make the video, so, you know, but basically let me know in the comments below any other videos you would want to see, and also, like, you know, leave a like, subscribe if you're new for more content, and that's basically going to do it, Real American Studios out, peace out, all my homies, alright, Sean, I'm stop recording, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, stop recording. Alright, and I'm going to stop the audio here.